Hello and welcome to ILTV's Israel Daily. I'm Aaron Porras and coming up in today's newscast, Israeli security officials are on high alert ahead of the coming holidays as terror attacks increasing in frequency and severity every day. Meanwhile, with members of the Palestinian Authority increasingly turning to and praising terrorist violence, what can be said about the prospect for peace in the future? And finally, an incredible, sustainable and attractive new way to design the furniture of the future, 4D printed wood. Tragedy overnight, an IDF officer killed Wednesday during operations adjacent to the Gilboa crossing. Sadly, last night, uh, we lost a major in the IDF operating against Palestinian terrorists with commanders in the front. It is yet another expression of the challenges the IDF faces in all arenas and the security it provides for the citizens of Israel at a heavy price sometimes. I convey my deepest, deepest condolences to the family and his girlfriend and embrace them and hug them. 30-year-old IDF Major Bar Falach from Netanya was killed overnight Wednesday near Jalama and the Gilboa Crossing in Judea and Samaria or the West Bank. He was deputy commander of the Nahal Recon Battalion. This has two Palestinian terrorists, both of whom members of the Palestinian Authority's leading Fatah security forces, flanked and opened fire on Falah and other IDF troops at the checkpoint. Israeli soldiers then returning fire and killing the two attackers. Far from an isolated incident, however, shooting attacks exponentially increasing as of late. In fact, just hours before this overnight attack, another shooting reported at the same area targeting a defense ministry engineering vehicle that was working on the security barrier. Thankfully, no one was hurt, though, and the IDF searching for suspects. Meanwhile, IDF analysts warning of an incoming spike amidst the Jewish holiday season in the next few weeks, with security officials presenting Prime Minister Lapid with evidence of some 70 concrete plans to harm Israelis during the season, and more than 240 major plots already foiled this year, including suicide bombings, kidnappings, and shootings. Particularly worrying, though, the increasing number of attacks perpetrated by and praised by the Palestinian Authority official security forces. Again, the two shooters from last night's attack, coming from the Palestinian Authority military intelligence and PA President Abbas's own Fatah party military, respectively. Joining me now with more on security, CEO and founder of the Israel Defense and Security Forum, Brigadier General Reserves, Amir Avivi. Amir, it's great to have you back with us. So defense officials are saying at least 70 concrete and imminent attacks are planned for the coming holidays. Should Israelis and visitors be changing their plans? Well, first of all, we have to understand what is happening. We see uh, Iranian involvement pushing forward the terror attacks in uh, Judea and Samaria. The Iranians took a strategic decision to try and create a new Gaza in Judea and Samaria. They're doing it with Hamas. They're doing it with Islamic Jihad. But we also see that uh, the Palestinian Authority that has absorbed huge amounts of terrorists into its, its infrastructure is also disintegrating, and we see operatives of uh, the Palestinian Authority carrying out attacks. And this requires, from the IDF, from the Shabbat, to enhance dramatically the readiness and the amount of forces and be ready for the next coming weeks, which will be holiday in Israel. I will so uh, Hamas and Islamic Jihad terror groups are now offering $200 for each shooting attack on Israelis as long as they publish video of the attack on social media. How do Israeli security forces and the Israeli government address this type of incitement? Well, of course, uh, when there is the uh, intelligence, uh, our forces uh, with the Sh Shabbat guidance, they apprehend these people. But as you know, social media is viral. This TikTok and uh, 
other uh, social media, Facebook, it goes everywhere. And because the education, the basic education in uh, Judea and Samara with the Palestinians is incitement and the calling all the time the young generation to attack and kill Jews and Israelis, obviously this resonates in the young generation of the Palestinian society. And therefore, we see more and more attacks. Uh, we also know that there is huge amounts of weapons that are smuggled from Jordan, but also produced in uh, cities in uh, the Palestinian Authority. Mm. So this definitely is a challenge. It's a very big challenge for the IDF and for the Shabbat. All right. Now, speaking of Palestinian incitement, we're joined by founder and director of the Palestinian Media Watch organization, Itamar Marcus. Itamar, thank you for joining us. Now, from groups like Hamas and Islamic Jihad, you would maybe expect this incitement. But somewhat surprising is the incitement, increasing incitement to martyrdom coming from the Palestinian Authority and especially President Abbas's Fatah party. From the streets of Ramallah, where they're handing out sweets to Fatah's official homepage, we see total praise for last night's terrorists who themselves are Fatah-affiliated militants. What do you make of this? The only reason anyone would be surprised about something like this is because they haven't been following uh, Palestinian Media Watch. We have been reporting on this uh, for years. We're reporting on the Palestinian Authority and Fatah education. But more than that, <clears throat> we've been reporting on their support for every single terrorist. Uh, since the terror wave started a few months ago, uh, every terrorist is honored. Palestinian leadership and Fatah leadership are going to the funerals, speaking with the parents. They're interviewing the parents. It is a myth. It's a myth that this has only been Hamas and Islamic Jihad uh, who are supporting this. This is Fatah. And, and by the way, and Fatah's incitement, Fatah's Facebook page has 300,000 followers. And their Facebook page today has turned these people and every terrorist in the last few months into superheroes. Uh, and I think that the the incitement by Fatah, uh, if it's not being taken seriously by security services, is a massive, massive mistake. They have been leading this. They have all of the, they have television, they have Facebook, they have, uh, they have uh, education. They have so many ways to get these messages out. And I think it's about time we stopped treating Mahmoud Abbas, as if he was a peace partner, and recognized that not today, but for years, he has been a driving force behind Palestinian terror. So, okay, you've mentioned that this is pretty consistent coming from Fatah and the Palestinian Authority and even the PLO. Uh, but how consistent is it in, in every language? Does, does what the PLO and PA say in Arabic match what they say in English? And if not, how big of a difference is there? Okay, so that is the, the, the major difference. Uh, what happens is that you have Hamas and Islamic Jihad who are willing to say what they believe in all languages. And then you have Fatah who has its messages to its own people. And then what they do is when they're asked by the international community, he, uh, Palestinian Media Watch quoted them saying this, quoted them saying that. And they'll say, oh, we tried to stop it. But what do you expect? Uh, Israel is killing so many of our people that, that sometimes even the Fatah people incite. What they do is they turn it around and they blame Israel. In fact, we can see that this is all directed from the top. It's not, it's not people who are not close to Mahmoud Abbas. I'll give you an example. Mahmoud Abbas's advisor on religion, the most important religious figure in the Palestinian Authority, uh, Mahmoud al-Habash, just a week ago went on TV uh, and, and quoted from the Quran saying that people have a right to attack and to kill those people uh, who, are, uh, who are threatening them and who are attacking them. A few months ago, he went on and he was even stronger. He even said that it's mandatory. He quotes from the Quran where it says, kill them. And he says, who does Allah want to kill? And he says, Allah wants you to kill those people who are bad, the people who take your land, they take your, your homeland, the people that take your rights, everything that he says about Israel. So uh, this is a boss's advisor on religion going on TV and saying there is an Islamic obligation to kill Israelis, every Israeli. So anyone who has been missing this has been uh, has been blind. And if the Israeli security services have not been reporting on this and have missed this, it is it is tragic and it's a major failing um, of the security services. So Amir, I want to bring you back into the conversation now. Israel regularly conducts security operations with Palestinian Authority security forces. How do you operate with an organization that openly calls for your death? Uh, well, I don't really agree with your description. 
when we go into operation, we don't do it with the Palestinian Authority. They are not involved well, not, at not every, all. In, well, not in not every not every IDF. organization, but there is but there is security coordination between Israel and the Palestinian Authority. Is there not? Yeah, but the, the security coordination is not about foiling uh, terror attacks against Israel. It's about coordinating movement of uh, their officials from one city to another. It's uh, about uh, threats to the Palestinian Authority. When they are threatened, they are more than happy to cooperate. The Palestinian Authority has never, ever foiled an attack 